Hello everyone, so this is Dr. Nikita here and uh, in this times of crisis when we are hit by COVID-19 that is coronavirus disease, it is best to take precautions and prevention and do our bit on individual level so that we conquer this disease as soon as possible and we get back to our routine life as soon as possible. And also it has made us realize that life is really unpredictable. There's nothing which is in our hands. So we should have faith on the superpower, on the supreme power, on that supernatural power. Also, Ames has recently published its management protocol for COVID-19. And I understand that as need PG aspirants or Ames aspirants, you are very much into this chart and you want to know what exactly the management protocol say because we are expecting question on this in our upcoming exams. Apart from that, this is not only for the Ames or need PG aspirants. This is the management protocol which all of us should know. Even if we are doctors or we are not doctors, every person should know about it. And that's the reason that I'm making this video. So let me simplify this chart, the management protocol which has been laid by Ames New Delhi. So let us start with that. So first of all, how do we define a COVID-19 suspect? Like uh, which patient do we say that this is a patient who could have, who is having, probably having COVID-19. So COVID-19 basically it would be an acute respiratory illness. What do I mean by that? There is fever with either cough or shortness of breath. Okay, but this could be seen in any respiratory illness. So when do we suspect COVID-19 is? When that patient has had history of travel to COVID-19 affected areas in the last 14 days. So the last 14 days is important. Or second thing, if the patient has had in the last 14 days close contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19. And the third is healthcare personnel who are treating patients of respiratory distress and now they are symptomatic. Okay, so these are these are the criteria to call a case as COVID-19 suspect. So as I mentioned, it's any patient with acute respiratory illness. That means fever with at least one of the following that is cough or shortness of breath. Plus there should be either history of travel or close contact with a COVID-19 confirmed case in the last 14 days or they could be healthcare personnel who are now asymptomatic. They had been managing respiratory distress patients and they are now symptomatic, right? So that is what is a COVID-19 suspect. Now, when you see such patients and you are suspecting COVID-19, then you decide the severity of the disease, whether the disease is mild or it is moderate to severe. So how do we do that? So a mild case is defined as a mild case is defined as the routine symptoms which we get in any URTI. It could be a low grade fever, cough, malaise, rhinorrhea, sore throat. Most important, basically, there is no shortness of breath. So if there's no shortness of breath, then you categorize it at mild case. So what do we do in that case? So you call the helpline numbers, you have various helpline numbers, you undergo a test. And if the test is negative, then you undergo symptomatic management for any URTI. Okay. If the test is positive, then what do we do in case of a mild case where there is no shortness of breath? In that case, what is advised is home isolation. For how long? The home isolation should be when till the time when the patient is more than 72 hours afebrile, that is three days afebrile. That means the patient should not have fever for at least three days. When the, it is satisfied, then the home isolation can be done with. So it is at least three days no fever or seven days after the symptoms had started, whichever is longer. That is the period of home isolation. So either three days no fever or seven days after the symptom onset, whichever is longer, that should be done. Or the second thing that we can do is uh, you should have objective criteria like two negative samples 24 hours apart. Like if you send a sample of this patient on one day, suppose on a particular day on Monday, you send the sample and then you send the sample on Tuesday. If both of these samples are negative, then you can stop the home isolation. That means that the patient is treated. That is how it is defined. OK, so first of all, you need to do home isolation then self-monitoring for fever so that you know when the patient is not afebrile. Then paracetamol and symptomatic treatment. So what is the treatment that is advised? So in a case of mild case, the treatment which is advised is tablet oseltamivir 75 milligram BD, two tablets of oseltamivir 75 milligram for high risk influenza suspects. So if you're suspecting influenza, give tablet oseltamivir 75 milligram BD. 
Then antibiotics if needed. The enriched antibiotics either azithromycin or amoxiclav that is augmented. So azithromycin or augmented should be given. And tablet paracetamol 500 milligram SOS. So basically you need symptomatic treatment. So paracetamol 500 milligram SOS. Then you can give oseltamivir if it is a high influenza suspect. And antibiotics to prevent the secondary bacterial infection in the lungs. So you can give azithromycin or augmented that can be given. So that is what we do, home isolation, symptomatic treatment, monitoring and you explain the contact and droplet precautions that should be taken by the patient. Danger signs are explained. So when should the patient report to the hospital like shortness of breath and other things which we'll see soon. And if the individual is a high risk individual, I mean uh, the patient does not have shortness of breath but the individual is a high risk individual then the high risk individuals may be considered for admission based on the clinical judgment by the doctors. Now who are the high risk individuals? How do you define high risk individuals? So these are the individuals who are at a high risk of developing severe disease soon. Now they might have mild disease but they can develop severe disease soon. They are at a high risk for that. So what is that? age more than 60 years so in elderly the severity is more cardiovascular disease including hypertension diabetes mellitus or other immunocompromised states and any chronic disease like chronic lung kidney or liver disease so basically if it's a patient with any comorbidity elderly patient then it's a high risk individual and the patient may be admitted based on the clinical judgment so that is what is the treatment for mild cases now what do we do for moderate to severe cases now, moderate to severe cases, how are they defined? They are defined as if there is tachypnea, that is respiratory rate is more than 24 per minute. If the SpO2 is less than 94% on room air, so you take the pulse oximetry, you look for SpO2, if it's less than 94, then it's a moderate to severe case. If there is CNS symptoms, that is confusion or drowsiness, or if there is hypotension, that is less than 90 by 60 should be the blood pressure. Systolic less than 90, diastolic less than 60. So let me just revise with you. What is a moderate to severe case? So if there is tachypnea, more than 24 per minute, SpO2 less than 94% on room air, CNS symptoms like confusion and drowsiness, and if there is hypotension. Okay, that is less than 90 by 60 blood pressure. This will categorize the patient as moderate to severe. So what do we do in that case? In that case, you need to admit the patient and then send the sample for testing. In mild cases, the patient was not getting admitted until and unless it's a high risk individual and that too based on clinical judgment. Here in moderate to severe disease, of course, the patient needs to be admitted and then you send the sample for testing. If the test is negative, then you can manage according to the existing protocol. If the test is positive and the patient is confirmed as a case of COVID-19, then what do we do? Since it is hypoxia, we need to do oxygen supplementation so that you maintain SpO2 more than 94%. Of course, you give antipyretics, antitussives and antibiotics which are given even in a case of mild case. Then... MDI is preferred over nebulization. MDI that is metered dose inhaler is preferred over nebulization. The drugs which you can give are hydroxychloroquine or lopinavir and ritonavir. These two should not be combined. Do not combine HCQ with lopinavir because that is drug interaction. So you can give hydroxychloroquine or lopinavir and ritonavir but both should not be given together but because there is drug interaction what is the dose of hydroxychloroquine the dose is 400 milligram bd for one day followed by 200 milligram bd for five days so on day one of hydroxychloroquine it's double the dose 400 milligram bd then for the rest of the five days give 200 milligram bd then lopinavir or ritonavir which is actually antiretroviral drugs 200 milligram two tablets bd are to be given on a case-to-case -case basis and these are to be given within 10 days of symptoms onset so if you have to give lopinavir and ritonavir these should be given within 10 days of symptom onset 200 milligrams two tablet bd okay and as i said do not combine hcqs with lopinavir or ritonavir and corticosteroids should be avoided do not give steroids okay corticosteroids should be avoided possibly because they decrease the immunity further so what is the treatment basically so since there's hypoxia give oxygen supplementation and symptomatic treatment antipyretics drugs for cough antibiotics 
MDI over nebulization and drugs to be given hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir or ritonavir, both not to be combined and steroids to be avoided. Okay, then you check the patient whether the patient is improving or the patient is worsening. If the patient is worsening, what do we mean by that? There is respiratory failure, there is hypotension, the mental status is uh, worsening, there is multiple system dysfunction. Basically, if multiple systems are getting uh, affected and the symptoms are worsening, then what do you do in that case? Shift the patient to ICU because it needs aggressive treatment then. In ICU, of course, you will need ventilation assist, uh, assist uh, ventilation should be assisted. So if you're giving NIV or HFNC, NIV is non-invasive ventilation, HFNC is high flow nasal cannula. So they should be used very carefully because there is risk of aerosol generation and spreading the infection to other people in ICU. So NIV and nasal cannula should be used very carefully. Ventilator management should be done as per the ARDS protocol. Conservative fluid management should be done if the patient is not in shock. If the patient is in shock, of course, you need aggressive treatment. If not, conservative fluid management. Standard care, whatever is there for ventilated patient should be done. You should prefer using closed suction and HME filters. That is heat moisture exchange filters. These filters, they actually prevent the tiny particles to be, you know, spreading around in the surrounding air. So these filters will help in preventing the infection. So do closed suction or use HME filters so that the infection does not spread to other people in the ICU. And if the hypoxemia is still refractory, consider doing prone ventilation or ECMO that is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation that means if the lungs and the heart are not functioning well you do extracorporeal that is outside the body by the machine you do oxygenation like you do hemodialysis in or like the kidney function done outside similarly the lungs function is done outside in ECMO that is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation if the patient is not responding at all so that the lungs and the heart of the patient are at rest they don't have to work so you can either do prone ventilation or ECMO for refractory hypoxia. Why prone ventilation? Because when you do prone ventilation, it decreases the dead space, the shunt is decreased and it improves the ventilation. So prone ventilation or ECMO. So let me quickly summarize that if the patient is worsening, multiple systems getting affected, symptoms are worsening, shift the patient to ICU. In ICU, if you're using NIV or nasal cannula, use it very carefully because there will be aerosol generation. To prevent this, you can also use HME filters and you should do closed suction. If the patient is on ventilator, according to the existing protocols, the patient should be, uh, should be managed. If the patient is not in shock, then conservative fluid management should be done. In spite of all this, if the patient still has hypoxia, it's refractory, then do prone ventilation or use ECMO. That is what the management protocol says. Otherwise, then, if the patient is not worsening, in a moderate to severe case, admitted in ward, the patient has improved, then when do you discharge the patient? So after clinical and radiological improvement, you discharge the patient similar to your mild cases when we stop the home isolation. If there are two negative samples at least 24 hours apart. So two samples taken on two different days, if both of them are negative, that means the patient is treated and then you can discharge the patient. Same thing applies to the ICU patient. If the patient is improving, send two samples 24 hours apart. If both of them are negative, then you can discharge the patient. Okay, so this is about COVID-19 suspect. How about people like suppose there's a COVID-19 suspect uh, nearby me and I have come in contact with that patient. How should I be managed? So in that case, asymptomatic traveler or close contact. I've been to a place recent, suppose I've been to Wuhan, China, but still I'm asymptomatic when I return back to India or I was in contact. I had a close contact there. So in that case, what is to be done? Home quarantine should be done and temperature should be monitored twice daily so that I know when am I developing fever. That means I'm developing symptoms of COVID-19 and there should be precautions, contact and droplet precautions so that if I am in the latent phase, incubation phase, I do not spread the virus to someone else. So as easy as that, in case of asymptomatic traveler or close contact, you need to do home quarantine. You need to have precautions contact and droplet precautions and you need to monitor temperature self-monitoring so that you know when are you developing fever. 
if in that case if the patient is developing if the person is developing symptoms like acute respiratory illness fever with cough or shortness of breath then that case becomes a covid 19 suspect and then you need to categorize mild or moderate to severe as i said mild case you need to do a test not to be admitted test if it is negative symptomatic treatment if the test is positive in a mild case you need to do home isolation for how long three days three days a febrile period or still seven days after the symptom onset whichever is longer or if the laboratory confirms two samples 24 hours apart are negative what is the treatment to be given paracetamol symptomatically you can give antibiotics azithromycin augmentin to prevent secondary bacterial infection and if it's a high suspicion of influenza give oseltamivir okay so that is the treatment when do you need to admit the patient of a mild case if it's a high risk individual that is elderly patient with comorbidities diabetes hypertension chronic disease then you need to do that of course in all the scenarios you need to have contact and droplet precautions to be followed what is moderate to severe case tachypnea spo2 less than 94 cns involved confusion and drowsiness and hypotension in that case you need to admit the patient and then do the test if the test is negative follow the protocol which is being followed or if the test is positive then you need to be aggressive in treatment and we need to do oxygen supplementation symptomatic treatment drugs we said are hydroxychloroquine lopinavir both not to be combined and steroids not to be given if the patient is still worsening then admit the patient to shift the patient to icu ventilation is required niv and hfnc that is nasal cannula to be used carefully use hme filters close suction if the patient is still having refractory hypoxemia then do prone ventilation and ecmo and if the patient is improving then you send samples, two samples, 24 hours apart. If both of them are negative, then you can discharge the patient. So I hope I have uh, helped you in uh, simplifying this management protocol, which is laid which is laid by Ames New Delhi, and it it clarifies the confusion which is there in one page which is given. So if you have benefited out of this video, if you've liked this video please uh, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments what else would you like me to cover in the upcoming videos and also share this video with whoever you think will benefit out of it so that we reach out to maximum number of people. And as I said, let us do our bit on an individual basis so that together we can combat this COVID-19 crisis. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel with the bell icon on. That's all for today. Dr. Nikita here signing off. Thank you.